morning, everyone. Morning. Wonderful singers, aren't you? I think some of you must be from Wales. <laughs> Got such great voices. Um, Mike mentioned the prayer meeting this morning, and I must say that when I was in the prayer meeting, it made it even more clear to me people's real heart to reach those who are in darkness, people who are in the false religions, in high control groups. And it's, I love it. I love the fact that I'm here with you all and that we all have that in common. We want to reach them. And some people here, you know, you've been in one of those groups. Other people, you've not, but you may know someone who's been in those groups. So, you know, today I'm going to talk to you about something that's really important, I believe, to do with the Jehovah's Witnesses. It's the resurrection of Jesus. Now, my name's Dawn, and I'm a former Jehovah's Witness. Um, I became a Christian about nine years ago. And I consider myself to be an apologist because nine years ago, when I became a Christian, I found that I had to re-examine everything, everything um, about what I thought the Bible said, you know. And I realized that there's a lot of differences um, with Jehovah's Witness teachings compared to Christian teachings, ordinary Christian teachings. So that's me. And I also formed a YouTube channel um, a few years ago called Witness for Jesus. So on there, my videos address the Jehovah's Witness teachings. Uh, another thing about me is that I recently started a degree in theology part time, <laughs> which is brilliant. Uh, you'll know maybe that Jehovah's Witnesses uh, are against higher education. And it's great. I've, I've loved it so far. I've learned so much already, even in the short time that I've been doing it. So I'm going to tell you a story now. And it's a true story. And you're going to wonder why I'm telling it you. But one night, as I was going to bed, I heard a screech from the bathroom. And it was my daughter. And I was like, what's the matter? And it was because there was a big spider in the bathroom. <laughs> And I went there and, and I looked at this spider and I thought, oh, it's one of those, you know, the big house spiders with the big antlers, you know, those, oh, they're coming in at this time of year. And we live near fields, so they're massive. And this one, it had seven legs. It lost a leg somehow. And um, we call uh, things names in our house. So we named this spider Dickie Seven Legs. And we said, oh, this is Dickie Seven Legs. But he had to go out. So between us, we got him in a glass and we took him out at the back and he went into the shed. He ran under the shed door and I thought, right, he can live there. That'll be all right. Three days later, I'm getting ready for bed and my daughter shrieks again. And there's another spider in the bathroom. So I go in and he's got seven legs and it's the same leg that's missing. And I thought, could it actually be Dickie Seven Legs back in my bathroom again? That's strange. So this time, got him in a glass, put him out at the front, on the front path. And this is a true story. <laughs> a few days later, I went into the bathroom and I jumped. I shrieked, yeah. And it was him again. It was Dickie Seven Legs in the same place. I thought, how could... This is so strange. The spider's got this thing where it wants to be in my bathroom. Assuming it's the same one. I think it was Dicky. I really do. It looked the same, the same colour and all that. So I got him and basically between us again, we got him out and we put him, we went all the way down the driveway, all the way down to a patch of grass and let him go there and, and he's gone. And I've not seen him since unless he got savvy and he's under my bed. But, you know, <laughs> let's hope not. Let's hope not. But when I was thinking about Dickie Seven Legs and this event, I was thinking about the fact that when you're in a false religious group, perhaps even been born in it, you can have things in your mind, teachings, things that have been given to you, and you think you've put them out, and they come back. 
in the dead of night, 3 a.m. or something, and that uh, the thing that you learned in the religion, um, perhaps it was Jehovah's Witnesses or some other group, like we'll be hearing about the brethren and, and different groups, but those teachings pop back. And I want to talk today about how some teachings were embedded in my mind and I had to really put them out. And the teaching on the resurrection of Jesus is one of them. And um, why am I talking about the resurrection? Well, because I think that it's really important. I remember clearly the moment when I heard the biblical teaching on the resurrection compared to the Jehovah's Witness teaching. So it was a paradigm shift. I was here and then five minutes later, I was here. It was a complete shift and it was so strange to me to hear this teaching about Jesus' resurrection. The real teaching was shocking to me. I remember that moment. And what does it mean as well to see Jesus' resurrection in the way that Jehovah's Witnesses do? What's the effect of that? That's one thing I wanna talk about. And how is knowing the reality of the resurrection different for us? And how can this help us then as well when we're reaching out to Jehovah's Witnesses? Because we're doing this because we love them. We love Jehovah's Witnesses. And we might have family or friends or other people who are Jehovah's Witnesses in our life. Actually, uh, put your hand up if you have family or friends who are Jehovah's Witnesses. It's quite a yeah, quite a few. And put your hand up if you've been trying to reach out to Jehovah's Witnesses at all. That's a lot of people. That's great. Brilliant. So we're all interested in reaching them with the gospel. So Philippians chapter 3, verses 10 and 11 say, I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. It's my belief that Jehovah's Witnesses do not understand this verse. And I think that the Jehovah's Witness organization denies the resurrection of Jesus entirely. So I'm going to show you briefly what Jehovah's Witnesses teach about Jesus' resurrection. And you can decide for yourself, actually, whether you think these teachings are reasonable, whether they sound logical to you. And more importantly, are they biblical? Are they true? So let's have a little summary of, uh, of what they believe. First, they believe that Jesus ceased to exist at death. Uh, in Zion's Watchtower, it says he ceased to exist, and that's been throughout their history that they've taught that. And that he was not resurrected bodily. So even the children's book, My Bible Stories, says, God did not raise Jesus to life in a fleshly body in which he died. He gave Jesus a new spirit body as the angels in heaven have. So going with that, God recreated Jesus as a spirit creature and he gave that creature Jesus's memories. And Charles Taze Russell, who is credited with founding the religion, says <coughs> he wrote, the man Jesus is dead, forever dead. Now he could say this because he meant the man, Jesus. He was referring to the humanity of Jesus being dead forever. They do talk about resurrection. They use that word, but they believe that the humanity of Jesus is dead. So let's look at uh, what this really means. What does this mean for Jehovah's Witnesses to believe this? Jesus was never actually resurrected because the Greek word uh, anastasis, not sure if that's the right pronunciation, but I'll go with it. Um, it means to stand up again. It, it literally means someone coming back to life, their body coming back to life. So for them, that never happened. And also it means that Jesus for them 
is only 2,000 years old because actually he ceased to exist when he died and he was recreated afresh. So he's only 2,000 years old for them and that's the reality for them. So we know that the Bible is clear that Jesus was flesh after his resurrection. So they're left with passages like Luke 24. How do they explain it? That he was flesh. If he was only recreated as a spirit. In Luke 24, um, this passage shows clearly that Jesus was flesh when, when he was resurrected. Um, he says, see my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones that, as you see that I have. And he goes on to eat fish. So how do Jehovah's Witnesses explain this? Well, they teach that Jesus created a fake body. They call it materialized to make it sound better, I think. So they say when Jesus appeared to the apostle Thomas, he took on a body with wound marks. He did this to bolster Thomas's faith since Thomas doubted that Jesus had been raised up. And that's on JW.org, a 2017 article. So apparently he made fake bodies to increase their faith. This means Jesus deceived the disciples. He created a fake body complete with fake wounds to pretend that that was the body that, was re that, that died, the body that raised is the one that died. And they also say that Jesus made many different fake bodies before he ascended. This is because they see the scriptures that say that Jesus uh, was not recognized. So they think he made multiple fake bodies. And it also means that the resurrection was not really anything special because the disciples also uh, believed that people could appear as spirits. And we know that from the text of the Bible because in the Bible, it says that when Jesus was walking on water, um, they thought he was a spirit that actually is in the text. And also in this instance, in Luke 24, when he appeared in the room, they thought he was a spirit. So to say that Jesus was just a spirit means that the resurrection actually wasn't any different from what they already thought happens to people. And it's like an afterthought for them, the, the resurrection. Um, I know from my experience of being one of Jehovah's Witnesses that it's as though Jehovah God just thinks, well, Jesus has paid the price and I can't leave him dead. <laughs> so I'll just create him again and, you know, give him his memories back. And that's, that's, that's the extent of the resurrection really for them. So what do they say happened to Jesus body? So where did the body go? Again, in their children's book, they say, do you know what happened to Jesus' body? God caused it to disappear. God did not raise Jesus to life in the fleshly body in which he died. He gave Jesus a new spirit body as the angels in heaven have. So they also say that God dissolved Jesus' body or disposed of the body. So this means that Jesus' body was never actually resurrected because as we've heard, resurrection is a resurrection of the body. So if you're hearing this information for the first time, <laughs> you might be a bit shocked by the information. <laughs> okay, that Jesus was never resurrected bodily, that he made fake bodies with fake wounds. It doesn't sound logical, does it really? But I was about 12 years old when I first learned this information. And, you know, I never once questioned it. I didn't question it at all. 
I'm going to show you a photo of me now when I was really young. Thought I'd throw this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm probably about 10 there. Right, this is pre Jehovah's Witness. Um, I had Christmas then, I had birthdays then, but it wasn't that long after this when I got involved with the Jehovah's Witnesses through my uncle, who was a Jehovah's Witness elder. And I really think that people accept the teachings either because they're born into the religion, um, they're young, or maybe um, they've kind of never considered the Bible, they've never studied the Bible, they don't really know a great amount of information. And the Jehovah's Witness books and magazines can come across quite convincing. You know, it's not an issue of intelligence. I think Mike said that last night. Um, there are some people in Jehovah's Witnesses who are really intelligent, but yet they'll accept these teachings that I've outlined to you that perhaps now when we look at it, we think that sounds ludicrous almost. So, yeah, that, that's another thing I was going to say is that Jehovah's Witnesses fall into two categories um, who I've spoken to about this. The category of the people who know all these teachings and believe it, they believe it, and I'll tell you why in a minute. And the other category is Jehovah's Witnesses who actually don't know this. And they'll argue with me and they'll say, no, we don't teach that. What are you talking about? You know, and, and I've had that as well. And I've had to get their own publications out and say, yeah, it is actually your official teaching this. And they're shocked because they're going around believing in the traditional, you know, biblical resurrection. And they don't even realize because I think it's the fact that Jehovah's Witnesses often ignore the resurrection entirely. It's hardly ever tackled in their meetings, hardly ever discussed. And, you know, you imagine that once I realized the, the real teachings, that I would just reject all the nonsense outright. But like Dickie Seven Legs turning up in my bathroom, um, again and again, I just found it difficult because things would pop into my mind again and again from what the Jehovah's Witnesses had taught me. So I'm going to show you some of those scriptures that they use to back up this teaching. And I'm going to do like a quick fire round um, where we look at five points that they give to back up this teaching and just a quick answer. Don't want to dwell too long on it, but, you know, it's useful for us. And these points are also on the information sheet. Um, so let's have a look at that. First one they use is 1 Peter 3.18. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. So they use that to say he was made alive as a spirit. But the text does not say as a spirit. And actually, there's no word for in in that verse. So the King James Version says made alive by the spirit. And that would actually fit with other scriptures, such as Romans 8, 11. Second point. That is um, the NIV, actually. But the New World Translation says in the spirit. It, says, it actually says the same thing in that verse, in the, put to death in the body, made alive in the spirit. Um, second point, 1 Corinthians 15, 50. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So they say that because Jesus um, went to heaven, then he couldn't be flesh and blood because flesh and blood cannot go to heaven, even though it doesn't say go to heaven in that verse. It says inherit the kingdom. But we know that flesh and blood in the New Testament is referring quite often to unredeemed humans, sinful people. So it's the um, sinful people who don't inherit the kingdom. In fact, there is another par parallel verse in um, 1 Corinthians 6, 9, which says wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom. The other point they make is Jesus was not recognized at first for on the road to Emmaus, for example, or um, Mary in the garden, for example. So they conclude that he must have been making fake bodies, different bodies each time that look different. 
but the text of the Bible explains it. Luke 24, it says that their eyes were kept from recognizing him. We see from the text that um, when he didn't want to be recognized, their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And also there are other occasions when he was just far away and they didn't recognize him because he was on the shore or something. It's not to do with his body changing, it's to do with their eyes changing. And then they also say that Jesus' body was given as a ransom so he could not take it back. This is an important one actually, where they're saying that what he gave when he died was his body. And to be raised bodily would be getting it back again. He would be snatching it back off the father, which, you know, obviously, um, doesn't really fit with anything. Jesus' life was given, not his body. So he presented his blood to the Father. So we know that it was his life and not his body that he gave. So it doesn't uh, make any sense to say that he can't be resurrected bodily. And the final point is being recreated is the same thing as resurrection, they say. So every time the word for resurrection is in the New Testament, um, it's bodily. I've got a couple of examples. In Romans 8, 11, it actually says that he will give life to your mortal bodies. And in Acts, that word is used 10 times, and each time it's in reference to the resurrection of the body. So those are just a few of the things that kept popping up for me, and it was just a quick rundown, really, of why they teach these things. So I hope you found that useful as well. So as I said, they, keep, they kept popping up for me like the spider, but I was going to tell you, actually, my, my nana, who I'm named after, uh, she used to pull her bed away from the wall and everything. And she used to put things in her ears to stop anything going in her ears and everything. And she lived till she was 93. And she had learned a lot and she'd seen a lot and she'd been through world wars and everything, two world wars. And I know that if she saw Dickie Seven Legs in her bathroom, she would have just squashed him. <laughs> <laughs> She wouldn't have bothered with all that, would she? <laughs> so I believe that we need to ask for God's Holy Spirit to help us uh, to put these things out. If you're suffering with this kind of thing happening, um, you can help people who are former Jehovah's Witnesses by knowing this information and, uh, and helping them to see the reality. And a large part of what I do actually is speaking to people who may have actually just left the Jehovah's Witnesses and they're really confused. And they're asking me for information about what the Bible says on different matters, including this. So when was the last time you heard a Jehovah's Witness tell you about the resurrection of Jesus and how amazing it is? Well, you haven't probably, because they don't usually. For them, it's just an afterthought and it's not central to their good news message. I've actually had Jehovah's Witnesses tell me that it doesn't matter. So when we've got onto this topic, well, it doesn't matter. He was a spirit, he was body. Well, it doesn't matter, does it? That's what they say. But does it matter? Let's have a look. Paul says in 1 Corinthians, the passage where we learn so much about the resurrection, says in verse 14, if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain. It really does matter. Saying that the man Jesus Christ is still dead in the ground, that's a denial of the biblical resurrection. And you'll remember that Romans 10 says that we must confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead. Amen. Jehovah's Witnesses are not believing in their heart that God raised him from the dead. And there's something really important that Jehovah's Witnesses miss 
entirely, which you might be able to bring out with them. And we're getting into the nitty gritty of this now. Looking forward to sharing this bit with you. If Jesus Christ is not resurrected bodily, then death still reigns over humanity. So I'm going to give you a summary that shows you the differences between Christian teaching and Jehovah's Witness teaching on this. In Adam, you can see that God does not dwell with man because God is holy and man is unholy, subject to sin and death. And there's a divide between heaven and earth. Um, that, this is kind of prefigured and represented by the curtain and the tabernacle in the temple. The most holy of holies was where God was. And men could not just go in there. The high priest went in there after ritual cleansing. Um, so there's this veil between because of sin, because of being unholy. And Adam was put out of the garden for that reason. So we're going to look at a diagram of what Jehovah's Witnesses are teaching for the future hope. And look how it's similar. For Jehovah's Witnesses, there's still a divide. Heaven and earth are still essentially separated. Um, Jehovah and Jesus are in heaven and 144,000 disembodied humans. And yet the people who were resurrected to the earth are still subject to sin. And that's something that people don't often know about the teaching of Jehovah's Witnesses is that you are taught that when you are recreated by Jehovah, you can still sin. So he recreates you effectively able to sin. And you will never see God. You will never see the 144,000. You don't believe you'll ever see Jesus. This is not a triumph over human death. So, yes. So it's, it's all right. Um, what's the hope then? Because as a Christian, my main hope is to kneel at Jesus' feet. Mm. The hope is let say, thank you for saving me. Yes. So, so where's, where's the hope? Then? Well, what do they work for? Well, for yes, for them. They, they believe that they're just going to be in an earthly paradise where all the non-Jehovah's Witnesses are gone and, um, and they, they have just a paradise forever on earth um, if they're, so they're striving earthly. So they're on a paradise earth rather than striving to see Jesus. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So... Let's have a look then at what we have in Christ, um, the difference. Jesus is the one who brings together heaven and earth. He's God made flesh, sacrificed and then brought to life. And his bodily resurrection is a triumph over human death and a confirmation of our hope. And look, we join him there. We're the children of God. Romans Chapter 4, verse 25 says, He was delivered over to death for our sins and he was raised to life for our justification. Because of Jesus' death and resurrection, we're declared righteous. We're made holy. We can be in his presence. He completely set us free from sin and death. He did it all. And the lovely thing about this diagram is that it applies to us today, actually. We're in Christ today. He's mediating for us today. Um, Romans 8 verse 34 says, Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. So let's have a look at our future hope. Our body is resurrected and glorified to an immortal spiritual body like Jesus's. And not only that, but we're promised the amazing hope of living with God because we're made holy. And it's one hope for all, unlike Jehovah's Witness teachings. 
We know Ephesians chapter 4 verse 4 says there is one hope for all and we're with him. Revelation 21 and 22, God will dwell with men. This is our hope. And it's a wonderful hope that I'm so happy now that I know this and that this is my reality. This is my hope. And I want to go into a little bit. Why? Why do Jehovah's Witnesses teach this? Why don't they just teach that he was resurrected bodily? Would be simpler, I think. <laughs> it really would. Well, the first reason is it's clearly a false religion. Um, we know that they deny the core gospel. And they're denying the gospel by denying the resurrection, clearly. Um, they've also had multiple false prophecies, etc. So we know that it's false. Um, and it's because of Satan. Um, if Satan wanted to form a religion today that's a counterfeit Christianity, he would say, Jesus' death shouldn't be understood. He wouldn't want anyone understanding Jesus' death. And also, he would not want anyone uh, believing that Jesus was actually resurrected. So this is how um, the Jehovah's Witnesses actually don't believe that Jesus was ever resurrected. I do believe that that's to do with the devil. G uh, Satan would also say, um, let's celebrate Jesus' death every year, because they use the word celebrate regarding Jesus' death. So they're going to celebrate Jesus' death every year and never celebrate the resurrection or mark it in any way whatsoever. Uh, if you go to the Jehovah's Witnesses at Easter time, if you go three days after they hold their memorial event to remember his death, nothing is going on. There's no difference. The talk will probably be about something completely different. There is no celebration. In fact, um, someone who I know who uh, came out of the Jehovah's Witnesses, she happened to come to church with me on Easter Sunday. And she said the impact of that was massive. To see people full of joy, celebrating the fact that Jesus is alive. He's alive, he's risen, wow. We're all so happy about that. And, and she saw that and we were all singing all these songs, you know, for the resurrection and it was so impactful. And it was only then that she realized why did I, I've never done this before. Jehovah's Witnesses don't do this. What, you know, why is this happening? And there is another reason um, I think that they teach this, and that is for control. It's because if Jesus is resurrected as a spirit, then you can have the 144,000 elite humans resurrected as spirits, and they will always rule over you now and forever they're in a different category to you they're elevated above you and then you feel that you have to follow them so the reason one of the reasons that they teach this about jesus is so that they can set it up for you following men following the 144,000 who they say are going to heaven so let's consider um, the truth. Some of the verses that I have used uh, to talk about the resurrection with Jehovah's Witnesses. So he said, didn't he, in John 2, destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. And they realized um, that he was speaking of the temple of his body because it was after, the, the text actually says, after he was raised from the dead they realized and remembered what he'd said. So Jesus walked out of that tomb. That's why the stone was rolled away. He met Mary in the garden. And it's almost like a, a little parallel. You know, we just had that thing about Adam and the garden. Well, Adam and Eve caused mankind to fall and be separated from God in sin in the garden. And in this new garden, Jesus has just walked out of the tomb and he's resurrected, he's glorified, and he meets Mary, and she's charged with spreading the news now that mankind is redeemed and joined to God forever in Christ. So 
that's you know a wonderful thing for us to bring out with Jehovah's Witnesses this these verses in John 2 I've spoken to Jehovah's Witnesses quite a lot using these verses and they haven't ever actually sort of responded to it I don't think they know why these verses say this and also in John 5 um, Jesus confirms our own bodily resurrection because he says those who are in their graves will hear his voice and come out. He's talking about the dead actually being raised and hearing his voice. So he's confirming there this. And you know, it is found in the creeds of Christianity, the resurrection of the body. If you're a Christian who, you know, thinks, has, has been thinking that we're disembodied forever when we, when we die, um, I wouldn't actually blame you um, for having that view. And also, we're all in, in different places at different stages. And, you know, um, I, I didn't, years ago, I had no idea about any of this, actually, <laughs> the truth is. But, you know, our spirit does return to God. The, the scriptures do say that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. It is that we, we do, our spirit goes to be with the Lord when we die. However, the final hope for us all is the bodily resurrection. Um, someone else who I know actually is a former Jehovah's Witness who's gone on an alpha course. Uh, she said that a facilitator was talking a lot about going to heaven and saying, you know, our hope is heaven. Our hope is heaven. And she queried the um, bodily resurrection, you know, um, and this facilitator of the Alpha course kind of didn't really respond about the bodily resurrection because um, I think the words he was using were relating to heaven a lot. And I do think that that's an issue of terminology. Sometimes we say, and I've heard it a lot, and I'll say it as well, uh, I'm going to heaven. And I mean, I'm going to be with God. And I know I'm going to get a bodily resurrection, but I'm going to dwell with God. So for me, the word heaven can encompass all of that. That's what I mean, you know. So um, it's easy for us to uh, confuse Jehovah's Witnesses by saying heaven. And they think somebody disembodied. They, they don't have um, the knowledge that we mean the new heaven and new earth. Uh, Revelation chapter 21 and 22 describe the new heaven and new earth that's what we mean but we might just use the word heaven so this is uh, just a kind of difference in the way that we speak even so as I say the creeds confirm Jesus bodily resurrection and his uh, the fact that he's a man um, they say in the Chalcedonian creed that Jesus is two natures co-essential with us according to manhood which is interesting and the apostles creed includes the resurrection of the body as being our hope as well so it's that parallel between jesus jesus resurrection and ours and also the early christians believed in the resurrection of the body polycarp um he died around 155 AD, and um, it's recorded that when he died, when he was martyred, he prayed and he said, I give thee thanks that thou hast counted me worthy of this day and this hour, that I should have a part in the number of thy martyrs, in the cup of thy Christ, to the resurrection of eternal life, both soul and body, through the incorruption imparted by the Holy Ghost. So we are raised, um, he, he mentions the incorruption. So the teaching really is that our body is um, raised to immortality and incorruption. So when we're talking with Jehovah's Witnesses about the resurrection, let's not argue with them about the earth. They think that their ideas about the earth are totally unique and no one knows that anything to do with the earth is involved you could agree with them and say the earth is included yeah the earth's included in our hope now that whether you think that the earth is burned up 
and created fresh or whether you think that this earth is you know renewed it doesn't really matter because speaking to them we can still say yes i believe in a bodily resurrection and i believe in a new earth and when i say this to jehovah's witnesses they'll say what denomination are you because they find it strange that a Christian would talk about a bodily resurrection, actually, sometimes. Um, sometimes they'll insist that I am totally unusual and all Christians think that we're going to be disembodied forever. But I'm not unusual in that. Um, this is a thing that even some people will say it at church in the creeds, that we believe in the resurrection of the body. So when we're talking to Jehovah's Witnesses, um, if we're savvy, we can sort of include that in, in what we are saying to them. I mean, obviously, we'd have this type of discussion um, at a certain point, maybe when, we've, when we know them or we've had a few discussions with them. I think this resurrection uh, discussion is something that comes a little bit later, maybe. I have heard one uh, uh, recording on YouTube, actually, where someone spoke uh, at the carts, the literature carts with Jehovah's Witnesses. I heard that recently and he, it was all about the resurrection. It was really an interesting way that he used to approach them. So it can work sometimes on the first contact, but normally I would say later on. And, and what I did was I, I tried it out this week actually on one of my Jehovah's Witness family members. <laughs> uh, but what I did, rather than saying, look, you think Jesus made fake bodies and you think this and that. I didn't say anything about it. I didn't say anything about what they believed. I just said, you know, I'm going to be doing a talk on the resurrection of Jesus. And um, it's really amazing how uh, we know that we have the hope of being resurrected bodily because he was resurrected bodily. And then I was able to talk about John 2. I was able to mention this and that. And they were just sitting there going, okay listening because i know that they were surprised and maybe they hadn't heard it before and i could then just leave that with them oh so isn't isn't it great and, and and maybe i think she chirped in kind of like oh well yeah we're, we're going to be in paradise oh, oh oh it's going to be great isn't it new heaven new earth and i just think helping them to um helping them to see um, our beliefs and the, the, the real scriptural teachings uh, that way without actually challenging their teachings necessarily is a good idea. We all know how Jehovah's Witness beliefs have evolved, like they believe in the Trinity originally mm. when the Watchtower began and they, believe they had a cross on the, the Watchtower magazine. But um, how early in the movement did the teaching on the resurrection deviate from this? Did the early Jehovah's Witnesses believe in the resurrection? Um, as for, I, when I quoted Charles Russell, mm. that was regarding the resurrection of Jesus. Are you referring to uh, you know, human? Yeah, I believe, in regard to our resurrection, I believe that they um, taught that there was no one resurrected to earth until they came up with their two hopes teaching that's my belief is that right jason i'm not sure anyway i'm not 100 percent sure but i know that they only taught about the uh, earthly resurrection and the earthly group compared to the heavenly group from 1935 when they came up with oh there's two different hopes and the reason for that without going what detail is that the 144,000 number had been filled their organization was already bigger than 144,000 and thought well where are we going to put everyone else we'll put them on the earth <laughs> so I think that's what happened yeah I think that's what happened so finally I want to talk about this paradigm shift that I experienced and I'm hoping it just gives you some insight I've had um quite a few health issues. I've had cancer many times and I realized just this week that it was 20 years ago when I got my first cancer, malignant melanoma, and it was 12 years ago when I got breast cancer. And since that, since 12 years ago, 
I've had multiple recurrences of breast cancer. So I've had um, lots and lots of treatment, lots and lots of surgery, bits taken out of me, you know, and, um, and I'm still on cancer treatment, you know, and uh, sometimes I get tired. So if I disappear later, I might be in bed or something. <laughs> I might be having a lie down. But I know I have eternal life. I know I have eternal life. So from going uh, from a place of being unsure of my salvation, I'm sure now uh, when I die, I will not cease to exist. My spirit will go to be with the Lord. And I'm looking forward to a resurrection of the body. Who I am and, and me, my consciousness will never cease. And that will be really me who's resurrected um, bodily. And, you know, I believe personally that this body that's scarred with bits missing will be restored to life and total perfection. And I don't know how God's going to do that. But I think he will. Well, I believe he will. Yeah. And God's, you know, he's outside of time and space. So I think he can find my body when he needs to find it, actually. When I was one of Jehovah's Witnesses, I thought I would be eternally separated from God. Only the 144,000 elite ones had the sonship and the anointing of God's spirit, and only they would see God in future. Only they would see Jesus. And I was facing a thousand years of learning how to be perfect. <laughs> yeah. So now I've got a future hope of being with God, which is wonderful. And an important one, actually, as a Jehovah's Witness, I had to give up hope of making any actual difference today in this life because they said it was pointless. Even trying to help others charitably in this life is discouraged by Jehovah's Witnesses because they present all of their activities as being the most important things that we all have to do. But Christians can choose a vocation. They can get an education and they can make things better today. And Jesus has been doing that you know, he's, he's the king, he's enthroned, and he has been working all this time, and he has changed the entire world. Yeah. He unites heaven and earth. The kingdom has actually come for us. We're in the kingdom, and he's present with us, and we're part of that. And when Jesus said he was sending the Holy Spirit, he really did send the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is empowering us. None of that was part of my Jehovah's Witness journey. So Galatians 3.26 says, In Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who were backed into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. And that's us today. So right now, I've been born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus. I can know him today as 1 Peter 1, 3 says, the richness of life in Christ, the beauty of knowing Christ, of knowing the work of the Spirit of God, it, all of this is ours. And why? Because Jesus was resurrected, because he really did triumph, because his death and resurrection really did change the world, because we look forward to seeing him face to face. We have the hope of eternity with God. So let's preach the gospel. Let's help Jehovah's Witnesses and all those trapped in false religion to come to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. Amen.